Okay, background noise is working. Testing mic. And we will turn the uh, microphone back on. And okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Osa. We are on Fab Sim 19 playing Oakfield Farm for our Saturday morning stream. There are kids in the house, so it will be loud today. And there was an update to OBS, so uh, I had to do a quick sound check before getting on with the episode. So, well, somebody left a weight in the way. I have picked up another contract for fertilizing because they pay well and we have done a couple of contracts off screen I have done something with our bales oh I took all of our bales down to the store and we might have to go down there anyway but I think we pretty much got enough fertilizer in the tanks to at least get this started and I don't think I have enough um, tank capacity to do the full field that we are contracted to do so I did order a tank of fertilizer at the store which we can go and pick up when we need to so off we go that crop in that field is looking really good that's the huge field Okay, contract is at 32. I'm going to turn the map on because. Daddy. <coughs> Hello. Oh, um, I is more hungry. We'll have toast or a cereal. Okay. Um. Okay, that was easy. No. Okay. Careful. So this is second day of early summer, so first day that our silage has been brewing. Still won't be ready for two more days. Yeah. So as soon as this contract's done, I don't think this contract will take us too long. Um, we'll be able to head back to the farm and um, do things on our own fields. Oh, I did also fertilize the grass fields with some solid fertilizer. So That was something that needed taking care of. The grass fields lose a lot of nitrogen when you harvest them, and that work does need to be replenished. And good morning, Captain Zank. Welcome to the stream. How's your Saturday going so far? they still want some cereal. Okay, Field 32 is the one we're contracted for. this and let's get started with our common extended income thing. So just make sure this is 32. Um, we're actually running out of um, fertilizer contracts to do. There's these two at the bottom which could pay well. I think 39's on the main road, 29's. Okay. 
Shield is engaged, so let's get this. Whoa! Uh, well, that sucks. No, turn off. Well, that wasn't such a good start. Let's uh, raise that boom a bit off the ground. Don't know if that's going to help us. Okay. Rolling again. Okay. Oh, that wasted a little bit of fertilizer. No, I'm going to fall after Yeah, well, I was thinking about that in my yard. We did that last week, and we have now a ton of hay in the front and the backyard. Well, I don't have a baler. I don't have any method to pick it up. <coughs> but it does look like it's going to take a little while to... Uh, biodegrade back into the lawn. Now, I do have a friend who is a cattle farmer. So I could always suggest, look, if you've got a conventional baler and a small tractor, do you want to come over and do something with all the stuff in our front yard? Because there's a lot of it. Although I doubt you get more than about two bales out of it. Anyway. So, oh, that's field 29. I'm doing 32, so I should probably monitor that one. But it looks like us today, we're going to be doing a lot of inside stuff. Actually assembling a trampoline. Um, just because it looks really horrible outside. It's probably going to rain later. I think probably what I'll do is I'll run up to the top here. And once we're in the corner, I'll turn around and run a straight line wrap back down the field. Now, a former colleague of mine bought three sheep to uh, keep one of his fields well cut. And he was planning to have one for Christmas dinner that year, but uh, his girlfriend gave the sheep names. So, once an animal has a name, it doesn't participate in uh, being the main course at lunch. Okay. That should do it. So what am I doing? 178, hook it over a bit closer to 180. Man, we just do a lot of driving up and down the field for a bit. I mean, goats are fun. The problem is with goats and sheep is they eat everything. And we're actually, you know, Mrs. Osa's actually considering a... Uh, Oh, what do they call it? A um, a container garden, I believe it's called. I wanted to say a pot garden, but a container garden where you have containers and you grow things in containers. Um, but uh, the only plants we've ever had success with are the plants in our aquarium. And surprisingly, in spite of the fact that I tried to kill them all, um, none of them actually died per se. I, I did end up um, taking cut it, new growth cuttings off some of them and pulling out the old stems. Basically, most of them lost a significant part of their leaves. So you have sort of... 
a foot, foot and a half of just bare stem with new growth leaves at the top. So, obviously I want some high level greenery and I want low level greenery. So I did, for some of them I cut off the new growth and replanted it and, for, and threw away the long dead stem bit. Not technically dead. And uh, for the others I just left the long stems there so we have greenery at high level and greenery at low level. Noticed a couple of, at least one of them. I pulled the uh, stem out but I'm guessing I left some of the roots there because um, we've got some new growth where I didn't do anything. So these plants, I don't know, I tried to kill them but they keep going. So. That's odd for me. Normally plants just die and that's it. But, uh, the aquarium's coming on again. Um, we do have a whole bunch of baby fish now. We have no idea how many because they're just too small to see them all. Uh, thank you. Seem to be having a problem with the uh, on off button there. Um, that was a little too tight. Oops. And 3.59 and a tiny, tiny bit more. I should be close. How are we doing on percentage? We're 23% done, so not bad. 30 acres. But we're certainly chewing through all of this uh, liquid fertilizer. Now also the other thing we've got going for the farm is as I said, in a couple of days our f silage will have fermented. We'll be keeping, I don't know how much, on the farm. And there will be at least one more production of uh, silage. But we need sufficient to last us fall and winter. Well, winter through spring, actually, because obviously the, the next cut will be full. So once all that's done, we've got to make the hay. I think the hay, I, I figured out how to make the hay. So the thing was, was I left the clover to dry overnight after tedding it to dry so it's semi-dry clover. We, we ended the last episode with semi-dry clover after I tedded it. And then I left it all that day and overnight. And the grass that I'd accidentally cut around the edge of the field, that all turned into hay. But the clover didn't. So I had to ted the clover again and that turned it into, or that turns it into silage. And I'm not, oh, sorry, not silage, that turns it into clover hay. Now I'm not complete with that job, and we will be going to that once this spraying is done. And I'll do a little bit of a demonstration on what we discovered so far. But it would seem that clover, probably alfalfa, and horse grass and all the rest of those um, maize plus grasses do not act completely like grass. So, um, that's, that's all part of the learning experience. But it, I have discovered how to make clover hay. So most of that field is now hay. Um, there's a little bit left that's still semi-dry clover. 
and the tether's hooked to the back of my tractor down there. Once we've turned it all into clover hay, we're going to have to windrow it. And I bought myself a windrower in the off period because you can't use a mower to windrow hay in seasons. And then we still have to take the baler down there, do the baling, do the collecting, and bring all that hay back to the farm where we will be keeping 100% of it for sheep food. And we're down to the second tank, or the front tank. I may have to come back and do that narrow strip. Obviously, if I bothered using GPS, which this tractor does have, I could have spaced that cut in a little bit more proficiently and left it so that we're running exact boom widths apart. Normally for uh, spraying, especially in a, an, early cro an early growth crop, I'm doing it all by eye and I'm doing it adjacent rows so I'm really not so concerned with the very slight overlap I'm getting on the left edge at this point. So we'll do that. Turn it off. Come on, really. I will. The on off button on my uh, farm sim control panel it seems to be a little bit problematic at the moment. At least as far as turn on and off is concerned. He's doing the laundry at uh, 9.30 in the morning. I'm not sure Mrs. Osa's going to be too happy with that. Honk! Honk. to do the vacuuming and he loves to do the laundry so every time he comes around he goes and checks that the uh, there's no clothes in the washer or the dryer and if they're in the dryer then he'll put them all in the laundry car and if there's clothes in the washer then he'll move them all to the dryer He doesn't get the clothes out of the laundry basket into the trolley because we don't do laundry every time he comes. So he only does that when Mrs. Osa says so. always wanting to do the vacuum cleaning especially uh, since he does make a fair amount of mess when he has food so anytime he's been over we have to uh, vacuum under the the kitchen or the dining room table and he always wants to do it Fortunately, we've got one of those lightweight um, rechargeable vacuum cleaners, so it's not as heavy as vacuum cleaners my mum had when I was a child. 
made out of a ton of steel and goodness knows what. So yeah, the plan today, we'll get this all done. I don't know when we'll finish the stream. Probably close to lunchtime. And, uh, honestly, I'm not sure how quickly time is going to pass once we've got the uh, bales pulled up to the farm. Because all of our fields are 100% fertilised or as fertilised as they needed to be because obviously things like the sunflowers do not need a lot of nitrogen. The clover, fortunately there is a drop in nitrogen content for clover as well so maybe after the next clover cut those clover fields will be at the ideal nitrogen level for next year i might need to throw some herbicide down on them just to uh, deal with the weeds over the winter For the grass, yeah, for the grass fields, I used the solid fertilizer spreader just because we had some leftover fertilizer from when we used it in the planter. We bought it for the planter because we planted sunflowers, and sunflowers didn't need a lot of fertilizer, so I ended up with far more solid fertilizer than I'd really intended to. And since we just cut the grass, it wasn't too bad running that big fertilizer spreader on the grass obviously for a grown crop it's not something you want to do because it's going to crush it and take it back one growth stage but, uh, I think I'm getting close to being almost out of solid fertilizer now. And uh, I do have the bank balance back up to um, more preferred levels. Although there has been a change of equipment lineup since last episode, which we'll introduce later today. 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Should be running in Celsius since we're in the UK, but. Oh well. the middle of the field. I wondered what that black line was. What I'd like to get, now, now that the basement is actually a lot more cleared than it was, I would like to get back into carpentry. Um, I've seen some ideas for planters which sort of raised planter boxes with uh, which you set up in a square so you can go into the middle put a gate on the front of it and put fencing around it so that the deer can't eat what you're growing the problem is you know, I don't know where in our yard would be good to do that we have a fire pit in the middle of the yard I mean, one of the things I'd like to do with the fire pit is to get some 
uh, paving slabs and sort of pave the area around it so there's less risk of uh, vegetation fire and hopefully the grass would be easier to cut around it because I don't have to drive right up against the edge of the uh, fire pit which messes with the blades if you do it wrong ah, right. oh we're out wow. I wasn't paying attention So that was 52% of the field. Um, that's the uh, kind of surprising that the little bits on this end are actually almost 50%, but I guess it is what it is. Plus there's that big band that we missed that's way too narrow for our boom width. Yeah, I have been noticing, because I do work with a uh, company that uh, supplies building materials. Building material prices are really, really, really skyrocketing. I mean, some of the stuff I was looking at yesterday, month on month comparison, we're looking at 25% price increase since April so that's that's a problem I would make a strong suggestion, if you're planning to build anything this year uh, buy all of the building materials as early as you can because the price at this point is only going up and if it's going up 25% per month or crazy numbers like that you, know, you wait till August before you buy the stuff and you're paying twice the price for your building materials look over there there's a great big wall of uh, that's all the grass silage um, and I bought all that down off camera last week after we wrapped it and I'll pull up to there a little bit closer. Yeah, I'm so 